Hello, everyone. This is George Chan with Lumagro Marketing. I'll be your host during today's 20-minute webinar titled Energy Efficient Greenhouse Retrofits and LEDs. Today's diverse audience includes universities, agribusinesses, energy consultants, and government agencies. We're really delighted that you've joined us today. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome our featured speaker, Casey Seals, the Greenhouse Manager at the University of Wyoming. Hi, Casey. Are you out there? I'm here. How are you guys doing? Casey? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? I uh, sure can, yeah. Uh, well, All right. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, sorry about that little technical glitch there. Um, but uh, yeah, we just want to thank you for sharing your greenhouse manage management experience with the viewers. Uh, during this webinar, Casey's going to present uh, the energy saving greenhouse strategies uh, that the University of Wyoming implemented to support part of their campus wide sustainability uh, program. And after Casey, Mike McCoy will join the conversation and tell us about Lumagro's horticultural solutions. Hey, Mike. Hello. I see a, a number of my customers are in attendance, so hello to all of you. Uh, without further ado, let's just uh, get right into it. Um, you know, Casey, as nice as it would be to have, uh, you know, a new $20 million greenhouse built for you, I suspect that most greenhouse managers are working with pretty limited budgets and older greenhouses. Uh, why don't you start us off with a quick snapshot of your greenhouses? All right. Uh, thanks, George. Everybody, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we sure can. All right. Um, well, I'd like to start. Uh, again, I'm the greenhouse manager here at the University of Wyoming. And our greenhouse is here. We're built in 1973, so we're coming up on our 40th anniversary this summer of these greenhouses. Um, we house six greenhouse ranges, and within those ranges, we have uh, 18 greenhouse sections, amounting to about 11,000 square feet of uh, greenhouse growing space. Our elevation here at the greenhouse is 7,200 feet, and our annual precipitation is only about 10.7 inches. Uh, we record an average daily mean temperature of about 40.5 degrees with a record low of negative 50 in 1963. And actually, we weren't too far from that just last week, so it gets really cold here. And our uh, highest temperature we've had here in Laramie is only 95 degrees in 1980, so we still haven't hit the 100 100 degree temperature mark yet, but um, we do have an average frost-free days per year of uh, 90 to 100 days with a growing season of 90 to 100 days. So we got this really short window to do any growing outside, and then hence uh, greenhouses here at the university get used extensively for some research here. Right, and I would imagine with the um, with the short window that you have, you probably do have a significant uh, energy bill associated with running your greenhouses. Hey, Casey, how much do you pay for electricity? Well, we're pretty fortunate here. We get uh, quite a break uh, here with the university, and we only pay 4.2 cents per kilowatt hour, which is quite a bit cheaper than uh, most people around the United States. Wow, that's, that's as low a rate as we've ever heard. Uh, the U.S. Department of Energy estimates that uh, electricity prices will increase 10% a year. Uh, in the U.S., Hawaii has the Highest electricity rates, about 28 cents a kilowatt hour. New England, New England is right behind at 16 to 20 cents. But compared to international electricity rates, the United States pays relatively little. Uh, most European countries pay over 20 cents a kilowatt hour. Yeah, so uh, it does sound like uh, electricity costs in your neck of the woods, Casey, are, are pretty low. But we're going to make a pretty compelling case uh, to, uh, around the electricity costs and return on investment a little bit later in the presentation. Interestingly enough, Greenhouse Grower just released their State of the Industry report. Uh, they asked growers which inputs are placing the biggest burden on their businesses financially. And not surprisingly, energy was by far the largest burden for growers. Yeah, you know, at this point, I uh, would love to conduct a quick poll um, to ascertain uh, where people are with regards to the various energy efficiency measures they've implemented at, at their greenhouses. Um, so I'm going to launch this poll here. 
it should pop up on your screen. We'll give you a couple, maybe 10 seconds to answer this poll on your screen. Um, the question is, which, if any, of the following products or systems do you use in your greenhouses? Please check all that apply. All right, answers are coming in for at 20%. All right, we got 40%. People are doing really well. Keep those coming in. Answers are streaming in. Right now, uh, energy curtains are by far, are about like 47%. Everyone seems to be using the energy curtains. Double layer glazing is very popular. Um, people are also using bench and or floor heating. We're at 70% of uh, respondees coming in. Okay, um, I'm gonna get five more seconds, get those answers in, and I'll go ahead and close the poll. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm going to share the results with all of you. Um, as you can see, uh, quite a few people are using energy curtains and double layer glazing. Um, some people are using bench and floor heating and uh, others are using high efficiency heaters. Uh, only 70% of you are using horticultural LED lighting. So thank you for you know joining us here at the webinar to learn more about the options that you have available to you. Okay, moving forward. Uh, Casey, um, would you tell us a little bit about how the University of Wyoming went about um, uh, discovering and implementing various measures at your greenhouse? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we've uh, initiated a sustainable uh, campus-wide initiative, I guess you could say, to try to reduce some of our costs and help um, our campus here to be a little more su sustainable. And in our, our section here at the greenhouse, we did a couple of things. One, we had uh, contacted Dr. Stephen Newman with uh, Colorado State University, and he had come up to our greenhouse here and provided us with a environmental control review, as well as uh, had done an audit of some of our greenhouses and some areas that we can improve, um, areas where we were inefficient. And also, we have been working with uh, Rocky Mountain Power um, and we're going to join a program with them called the Finanser Express, where we can get uh, energy rebates by taking measures to uh, reduce our energy use. So we're real excited to work with them. And now that we have our uh, LEDs that we have ordered installed, we're going to do that review and see see where we're at compared to past years. That's great. Um, I, I just want to acknowledge the uh, the importance of bringing together various stakeholders at organization. You know. Uh, whether it be your facility managers, people who uh, are running sustainability programs at your organization, and also bringing in you know experts to help consult with uh, your, your your program, that it, it is really important to get a, a, a good bench of people um, working together to implement these strategies. So uh, moving forward, why don't we, Casey? Why don't you take us through a, a little virtual tour of your greenhouses and uh, some of the measures that you implemented? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, with our older greenhouses, at, uh, our glazing seems to be one of the bigger problems that uh, we had addressed. Uh, we had enough money in our budget to reglaze three of our six ranges with a uh, eight millimeter double walled polycarb to replace our degraded uh, glazing that we had had. Uh, that was done in 2010, and we were figuring that we were losing about 30 to 40 percent of our light transmittance through our old our old panels. And so we've upgraded three of those six ranges, and hopefully we'll be able to get the other three done here soon. Uh, in the summertime, we do whitewash greenhouse exteriors for sections that tend to get hot during the summer months. And with our greenhouse setup, they were actually built to be kind of a greenhouse lab. They're actually relatively small greenhouses within the range. So they, the heating is, uh, the greenhouse is heating up in the, in the summer is big problem for us trying to keep them cool. So we do whitewash the exteriors of most of our greenhouses during the summer. In the fall then we will go ahead and uh, remove that whitewash with a uh, power sprayer and we also make sure that in the fall we check for um, gaps, cracks, uh, any equipment shutters that aren't functioning properly and we'll get those fixed or filled uh, to help reduce any of the outside airflow and keep our environment that we were wanting to get. In uh, the winter time we do quite a few things, but a few of the highlighted ones we have done here, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we set our ridge vents to remain closed with, if the outside temps 
fall below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's to keep that cold air from rushing down onto the plants. If the greenhouse sees that it's too hot, opens those vents, we don't get that cold air rushing in. Uh, we also shut off all the water to our swamp coolers, and we block off the vents that uh, pour that air into the greenhouses so that we aren't getting any external air during those real cold days blowing into our greenhouse. We inspect our heating systems, both the, the steam and our secondary gas-fired heating systems, and we have some greenhouses that have shade curtains, and we'll close those at night to uh, help conserve some of that heat inside those greenhouses. And we also have a system set up to where if we have an alarm in the greenhouse, depending on where I set those set points uh, for an alarm, I'll get a text on my cell phone 24 hours a day saying that something's not right in the greenhouse, I need to come check it out or call the HVAC guys to maybe come out and help me help me do that. Um, our heating systems, we uh, our main heat is a boiler system. We use a Cleaver Brooks boiler in our mechanical room there, you can see in that picture. And that was replaced in 2005. And for our secondary heating, we use a Modine gas fire heater. And there's one in each of the greenhouses there. Moving on to uh, some ventilation that we had upgraded. Um, one thing we had found through our report with Stephen, uh, Dr. Stephen Newman with CSU, was that uh, we weren't moving enough air through our greenhouses to help cool them in the summer. So one way we had upgraded that was to ex uh, install exhaust fans on a variable frequency drive. And that way we aren't losing energy to fans just being on or off, but they're variable speeds. So the energy fluctuates with the use of those fans. Also, they're bigger now, so we're able to move more air, helping cool those ranges. We also have uh, two horizontal airflow fans in each of the greenhouses to help circulate some of that air. And uh, some of the greenhouses also require humidity. And so we, we have installed the uh, aquifoggers in those greenhouses as well. For the uh, outside, the radiation and the glazing of the greenhouses, as I had mentioned, we had replaced uh, some of those with eight millimeter double wall polycarb. And the older ranges, the ones that haven't been replaced yet, still have that eight millimeter double wall polycarb. But uh, as you can see in this picture where we get that hazing from the older panels, so we're looking to hopefully get those replaced to help as well. Our roof is a single walled corrugated polycarb and the corrugation does help, you know, with uh, some of our snow and ice removal. Um, I think one thing I'd like to see though is for us to be able to put another layer maybe uh, so we can have an insulating layer on the roof uh, as well as on the sides with our eight millimeter double wall. So in, uh, in respect to the lighting, uh, that was one of our huge energy consumptions. Most of our greenhouses have supplemental lighting. Uh, the researchers would like to have 12 hour grow days. Um, we don't get a lot of those in the winter time here. So we, uh, we have the addition of, of our lighting. So in some of these ranges, we have uh, gone ahead and uh, used the LumaGrow lighting, uh, LED lighting, because we do get huge savings um, from those from switching to LED lighting over our HID fixtures. Um, that's, this, great. that's great to hear. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I was going to ask you, um, you know, have the researchers noticed any differences in the, in the plant growth, Casey? Uh, we have noticed that uh, with the LED lighting that we're getting the same, if not just a little bit better growth, actually, out of the research plants. And I believe this is due to the fact that we can change the light spectrum on these LED lights from a blue spectrum in the vegetative stage uh, up to a red spectrum in the uh, reproductive phase of the plants. So we're able to control the, uh, manipulate the light to be direct to what the plants are requiring at their stage of growth. Instead of like an HID that just floods it with, with light, we can actually dial in to the growth stage of the plant. That's great. So you, you've got, um, I think you've got, you replaced eight uh, 600 high intensity discharge lamps with uh, the the older ES330 model, and then you recently installed 12 new uh, LumaGro Pro 325s to replace your 12 600 watt HID fixtures. But I, I will incidentally say that the Pro fixtures, uh, the new Pro fixtures are twice the brightness of the ES330, and the Pro 325 is running at 325 watts. is was designed to 
replace the thousand watt uh, high intensity discharge light. So we're excited that you've got those installed in your greenhouse and that it's working well for you. Yeah, they're working great and uh, we're sure happy to have them here and look forward to conducting more research under them. Fantastic. Um, let's see. So at this point, I'd like to do another quick, quick poll. Um, and uh, the question is, uh, do you or are you considering a horticultural lighting project in 2013? Um, and I'll, I'll just leave this open for a couple of seconds because we are uh, running, running out of time here. I want to make sure there's some, some space for us to, to answer a couple questions. I'm go, going to go ahead and close the poll now. Thank you very much. Um, and, and uh, you know, Mike, at this point, maybe you could jump in and talk a little bit about the economics of the Lumibro solution. Sure thing, George. Uh, as you can see, regardless of what you pay for electricity, uh, choosing our LED technology over HID lighting will provide a payback in less than three years. This graph does not show additional savings. You may also see in areas like water savings, cooling equipment, and utility rebates. Installing our LED technology makes sense. Uh, yeah, and we got a lot of great things in store for 2013, right, Mike? Yeah, we sure do. Uh, there's lots to be excited about. Uh, we'll be introducing SmartPAR later this year, which is the industry's first light automation software. You'll have real-time control of your greenhouse fixtures. You'll be able to set DLI targets, light recipes, and it will allow for energy use management and monitoring. We have a number of programs available for customers to implement our technology. There's the buyback program, Lumigro leasing option, and local rebates may be available to you. Uh, in Northern California, PG&E offers the OBF or on-bill financing program, which lets you make facility improvements without large outlays of cash. We uh, here at Lumigro also offer a pilot program and no obligation custom light planning to ensure your requirements are met and the success of your project. It's very easy to install our Lumigro LEDs and I'd be glad to discuss your lighting needs. So uh, give me a call. Yeah, we've got a uh, we've got a lot of leaders and uh, organizations working with us retrofitting their lights. We're super excited about that, um, and we also want to direct some of the folks here to various tools and resources that are available to you. Want to uh, acknowledge the work that uh, a lot of the researchers and extension programs have already done with regards to greenhouse energy reduction strategies. There's the Michigan State, Cornell, uh, University of Wisconsin. USDA, among others. Uh, I'll go ahead and send out this link to uh, you after the webinar. Uh, in fact, some of the folks that are responsible for these resources are online with us during today's webinar. And I might uh, actually invite you all if you would like to participate in a, a, a webinar with Lumigro or maybe, you know, partner up with us so that we can provide more information to the general public with regards to LED horticultural lighting solutions. Um, I think it's probably time uh, now for us to uh, promote this technology in a wider scope and application. And a lot of you are already doing the research and supporting that. So for that, we want to thank you. At this point, I'd love to get into some questions. We've got a couple more minutes here. Um, Casey, we've got some questions for you. Um, one of them is, uh, Casey, are the majority of your plants horticultural or do you also have agronomic crops under the LED, small grains, et cetera? Uh, we actually run both sets of plants uh, through the various research uh, of, the, of our different researchers out here. So we do everything from rangeland to entomologists have some plants out here, horticulture. So quite a wide, wide range of plants out here. Yeah, um, that's great. And uh, I would just add that, uh, you know, people are using our fixtures to grow algae, rice, corn, soy. Um, some of them, some folks use it for uh, growing lettuces, microgreens. Um, so really, it runs the whole gamut of uh, of crops. Let's see. We've got. Let's see if we've got another question here. Let's see. Someone asks. Casey, did you meet with any resistance in con converting to LED from your users slash researchers? I think at first, uh, the first greenhouse we had done it in, our researcher was a little skeptical, but he was excited about uh, making that change to energy savings. And since then, uh, he's 
he's adamant that uh, these lights work great for the type of research that he's doing. That's fantastic. Um, got another question here. Will the fixtures work at different voltages? Mike? Yes. Uh, our fixtures work with 110 to 120, 200 to 240 volt systems, and uh, they can be spec'd for higher voltages as well. So I got time for one more question. There's quite a few here, so I apologize in advance that I can't answer all your questions. Um, but we will have, uh, for questions that we don't answer, we'll go ahead and follow up with an email. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, someone's asking, what's the warranty on the Pro Series fixtures? Warranty is an industry-leading five-year warranty, and we haven't had a single fixture returned because it did not perform. Okay, well, let's see. We're at our tour just over time at this point, so I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, hey, Casey, thanks so much for uh, taking some time working with us. Um, really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. And I'd also like to thank our audience for your questions. Again, questions that our presenters could not answer during our allowed time frame will be answered by email. And I will be sending out a link to this recording uh, early next week. Please be on the lookout for announcements um, about more Green Ag educational series. And as you exit the webinar, we have a little survey. should take more than you know, 30 seconds to answer. It'd be very helpful to me in producing additional, you know, future webinars for you to, to uh, fill that out. Um, again, thanks very much, and, and we hope you enjoyed this webinar. Uh, I know 20 minutes is not a lot of time to, to really get into the weeds, so to speak, but we will be having many more webinars in the future. Thanks again.